part two in a video discussing assembly programming for the PIC-16F 1719 microcontroller. In this video we will continue to talk about the various assembly commands available, largely focusing in this segment on arithmetic and some logical commands. We will first begin by looking at table 33-3 from the PIC datasheet. In this table we can see a list of the byte oriented commands and we can see some of their syntax and what they actually can do and then we also see over to the right hand side which bits of the status register those particular commands may affect and so it's important to note that various bits of the status register can give us some indication of what happened with some of these arithmetic commands and we'll see some examples of that as we move on through. Before we begin we must remember what those three bits of the status register are. So bit two of the status register is the Z bit short for zero. That indicates when the result of an operation, whether it be a logical operation or a mathematical operation, results in a value of zero. There's also a digit carry that is used when there is a carry between two nibbles. So two different hexadecimal digits. If there was a carry out from one to the other, the DC bit would be set. And the C bit, the carry bit, is also the carry and the borrow bit. That indicates when you have an addition operation, if there was an overflow resulting in a carry out, and it can also be used to indicate if a subtraction operation went negative if there was a borrow. And it's important to look at the more detailed explanations of each of the commands in the datasheet to determine exactly when those different bits will be set or cleared. So let's go ahead and begin and talk about the different commands that are available. First of all, there is the INCF, which is short for increment F. That simply adds one to the value in the file register that you specify. You do have the option, however, of putting that value plus one into the W register instead of back into the register. So if I put in INCF port B comma one, that would increment the value that is in the port B register and put it back into port B itself. If I did INC port B comma zero, that would put the value of port B plus one into the W register and would leave what's in port B unchanged. It is also important as we go through this to remember that we must be in the appropriate banks for the registers that we anticipate using. If we are in the incorrect bank, we will not actually be working with the register we specify. INCFSZ is very similar to INCF in that it does increment and you do have the option of specifying where that incremented value will go to. But the one added functionality that comes with INCFSZ is it has this skipping if zero. So if you were to increment a value and that value prior to incrementing was 255 decimal or FF hex, it filled up the entire 8-bit register with ones then after the incrementing it would roll back over to zero. If that were to happen this would skip to the line after the next line of code. It would skip over the next line of code. This is very useful to developing things like for loops which we will talk about in a future lecture. Similar to the increment we also have decrement operations so DECF and DECFSZ work exactly the same as the increment with the only difference being that in this case we are subtracting one rather than adding one. So DECF will subtract one and DECFSZ will subtract one and if it subtracts down to zero so if you had one and subtracted down to zero then you would skip the very next command and in both of these cases you can specify that the results of this decrementing can go back into the register itself or go into the W register with a comma zero for W comma one for back into the register itself. ADDLW adds a literal value and puts the result into W. So add a literal to what's already in W and then puts the result back into W. So in this case we can add a constant value to what we already have. There is no other file register here so you do not get a choice of whether to put it into W or something else. You cannot override the literal value so that gets written right in there. ADDWF takes what's in W and adds it to 
a particular special function register that you indicate. So the example here, ADDWF Tris A comma one, takes what's currently in Tris A, adds what is in the current value of the W register, and then the comma one says store this result back into the W register. If we were to put a zero there, then that would store the result into the W register. ADDWFC is very similar to ADDWF, but it has the added functionality of adding in whatever is in the C bit. This can be done by manually setting or clearing using a bit set or bit clear the C bit in the status register, or you can use the result that was in the C bit from the prior operation. So if you had done a previous um, addition operation that may have impacted the C bit, and you want to maintain that value and use it to add to the next, then that can be the case. And so this does bring in whatever is in the C bit plus whatever is in the register you specify plus whatever is in the W. Since we can do addition, we can also do subtraction. So SUBLW, it's important to note the order here. SUBLW subtracts W from the literal. You are not taking the literal value away from W. You're taking what's in W away from the literal. And in that case, it's stored back in W. And likewise, you can subtract W from a register. So W minus whatever's in a particular register. And in that case, you do have the option of putting the value back into either the W or the register itself. And then SUBWFB is very similar. Um, just like we had an addition that could bring in the carry, the borrow is the same as the carry bit, but in this case, what is added in this case is, or sorry, what is subtracted is the opposite of the C bit. Okay, so if the C bit was 1, you would subtract 0. If the C bit was 0, you would subtract 1 in this case. So this allows us to maintain some twos complement mathematics here. RLF is a rotate through the left, rotate to the left through the carry bit. And so in this case, you see this illustrated. Whatever was in bit 6 will go to bit 7. Whatever was in bit 5 goes to bit 6. The most significant bit here in bit 7 flows out and replaces the carry bit. The carry bit's previous value ends up replacing the least significant bit in the register. And effectively what this does is acts like a multiply by two. Now it's not a perfect multiply by two if you're talking about things that may be two's complement values where maintaining the appropriate sign is important. There are some other operations which are a little bit better if you are trying to work with two's complement numbers and want to do this multiplication. RRF is exactly the opposite. It just rotates to the right instead of to the left. So rotating left and right is also useful if you just wanted lights to turn on in a particular pattern. You wanted to rotate things back and forth. You could think about that for something like an advertising display or maybe running Christmas lights or something like that. And so in this case, this rotates the least significant bit into the carry bit, and the previous value of the carry bit rotates into the most significant bit. ASRF is a little bit better um, if you are trying to preserve two's complement values. So this is an arithmetic right shift. This effectively does a better job at dividing by two if you have signed values. So what this will do is it will preserve the sign. And so if you had a 1 in the most significant bit, when you rotate everything to the right, a 1 stays in there regardless of what was in the C bit. In this case, the least significant bit still does rotate over to the C bit um, for later use. So this is a better divide by 2 if you were talking about sine 2's complement values. If you were talking about unsigned values, you may want to just do um, the traditional rotate right to divide by two and make sure that the C bit is cleared out or you can also do a command which we'll talk about in just a moment. The logical shift right is similar to that but that's always going to put in a zero regardless of what is in the C bit so you're rotating to the right and putting in a zero so this is good if you have an unsigned quantity and you want to divide by two. There is a logical shift left that does exactly the opposite. In this case, the least significant bit is set to a zero regardless of what is in C, and the most significant bit comes over into the C bit. 
And so let's go ahead and trace through this example. So in this case, we want to know what will be the value in the W register after the following sequence of commands. And you may want to also keep track of things like port B and your status register to know what would be in W. So you may want to go ahead and pause this video and work through tracing through the values of W, port B, and the status register. And then once you think you've done that, come back and we will explain. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through the result. CLRW clears out W, so Z zeros fill up the W register. It does not impact port B at all, so we don't know what's in port B. It's important to note in the status register for this pick that most significant three bits are unimplemented. So we have dashes there. We're not going to worry about the next two bits. They don't have anything to do with mathematical operations. They're more uh, things that are powered down and, and dealing with timers and things like that. So we won't worry about that. CLRW does set the, the Z bit. So because the value in W did go to zero, the Z bit does get set. CLRW does not affect the digit carry or the carry bit, so those will remain at whatever they were before. Now, we are purposefully trying to clear the zero bit of the status register, which is also the C bit. So in this case, the BCF, that's not affecting W, it doesn't affect port B, so those remain unchanged. And now we're just zeroing out this particular bit over here. Now we're moving a literal 17, and remember that 17 is hexadecimal 17, into the W register. So here we see that. Again, that did not change port B. Now, over here, you may be saying, well, that didn't put a 0 into the Z bit. That wasn't 0. But in fact, MOVLW does not impact the Z bit. So in this case, the status register remained the same. SUBLW. Now let's see what happens with the subtraction. So in this case, what we are doing is subtracting what was in W, which is hexadecimal 17, from the literal value of 10 hexadecimal. And if you work that out mathematically, that should work out to negative 7. And so negative 7 in 2's complement takes on this value right here. And so it's important to note that when that happened there was a borrow and borrows are indicated by a zero happening within the C bit so zeros indicate borrows or values going negative the result was not zero so the Z bit does in fact go to zero and the digit carry goes to zero I would suggest that you look very closely at the data sheet for SUBLW to make sure that you understand how the C DC and Z bit are impacted by that arithmetic operation. This is two's complement, so it's important to remember your two's complement mathematics. Now we're simply moving what was in W over to port B, so we now have a copy over here. That's not going to impact our status register. And then we're going to increment the value in port B and put that back into port B itself. So that doesn't impact W. That is going to be one more in port B. That did not result in a value of zero, and so the Z bit is still zero over here. There wasn't any carry, there wasn't any digit carry, so all of those bits stay at zero. Now we're going to rotate right port B, and we're going to put the value into W. So the value in port B is unchanged, and so now let's look at what we had in port B and look at it every bit rotated to the right. So this one, 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 those are the five most significant ones, zero, one. And then this zero got rotated into the carry position. It already was a zero. And then we rotate in the zero that was in the carry over here. So this is the new value put into the W register. And then finally, we're going to add a literal five to W. So that did not affect B. When we add five here, now this is treating this value as though it's an unsigned value. So even though we may have thought about it as a sign value before, particularly after this subtraction. Now when we add 5, we did have a carry from this bit to that. There was not an overall carry out that was able to fit the value within our 0 to 255 range for unsigned values. So the C bit was not set, but there was a carry from this digit to that digit. 
because this value overflowed the lower four bits and so the digit carry happened but the result did not go to zero so the z bit was not set so this is an interesting example allowing us to watch the status register allowing us to see how these different arithmetic and logical shifting operations happen and so please do continue on to step three of our videos.